Most people are familiar with the principal Viking gods such as Odin, Thor, and Loki. But what about the goddesses? Due to the nature of the surviving sources, written by men in the medieval period and mainly concerned with male history, a lot of information about the Norse goddesses is obscured or lost. For example, we know the fates of a dozen male gods at Ragnarok, but aren't told the fate of a single female goddess during the apocalypse. Today, the VKNG team wants to take a closer look at the Norse goddesses and giantesses, and what exactly we do know about them. Keep watching as we share information about the 10 most important Norse goddesses. If you want to learn more about any of them, you can find full articles on our website, vkngjewelry.com. Let's get started. 1. Freya Freya is the most important Norse goddess, and there is widespread evidence that her cult was very popular during the Viking period and four centuries later. She is one of the Vayner gods, which are more like nature sprites than their Aesir counterparts. The Vayner are predominantly associated with fertility and magic. Freya, whose name means lady, is the goddess of love and beauty. She is extremely attractive and desirable, and many giants come to Asgard seeking her hand in marriage. She is immediately recognizable by the beautiful golden necklace, Brzingamen, which she always wears. She also cries golden tears. Freya is an expert in the art of Seder magic and is a principal priestess of the art. It was Freya who taught Seder to Odin. A connection with magical practices is only one of many similarities between Freya and Odin. For example, just as Odin collects the brave fallen dead to live in his hall Valhalla, Freya also collects the souls of fallen warriors to live in her domain, known as Folkvengar. There's even evidence to suggest that she gets first choice. 2. Frigga Frigga is the Aesir wife of Odin and a goddess associated with marriage, motherhood, and the responsibilities of the matron of the home. She is a prophetess, but she never tells anyone what she sees. It is this ability that allowed her to foresee a threat to her son Baldr. In response to this, she traveled the cosmos and secured promises from everything in existence not to hurt or participate in hurting her son. This made him invincible. Sadly, she forgot the humble mistletoe plant. This gave Loki an opening to kill Baldr. It is the death of Baldr that sets in motion the events of Ragnarok. While Frigga is the wife of Odin, it is worth noting that she is not the mother of Thor. The god of thunder is the son of Odin with the giantess Hjordr, who is a personification of the earth. Surprisingly little is known about Frigga for such an important goddess. Many scholars believe that this is because Frigga and Freya were initially one goddess. When the two split, the most interesting stories seem to have gone with Freya. This would also explain the many connections that exist between Oda and Freya. 3. Sif the wife of Thor is a fertility goddess principally known for her shining golden hair that represents golden crop fields. The most famous story about Sif sees Loki removing her hair in a prank, but he removes it in such a way that it will never grow back. An enraged Thor demands that Loki replace the hair with something just as fine or face the consequences. Keen to save his own skin, Loki traveled to Svartlaheim and asked the dwarves to create a golden headpiece for Sif and enchant it to grow on her head. They agreed, and while there, Loki was able to gain other treasures that he used to appease the gods. These included Thor's famous hammer, Mjolnir. 4. Sigyn Sigyn is the goddess of victory. She compliments Odin as the god of war in the same way that the Greek goddess Nike compliments Ares. Sigyn is the Aesir wife of Loki. He also has a giant wife, Angerboda. When the Aesir gods decide to punish Loki for his role in the death of Baldr, Sigyn stuck by his side. The Aesirs started by killing Loki and Sigyn's two sons. One was turned into a wolf and tore his brother apart. His entrails were then used to chain Loki to three giant boulders. A venomous snake was hung over Loki's head to drop painful venom onto his face. Sigyn stays by Loki's side, catching the poison in a bowl. 
but sometimes she must leave to empty the bowl. When this happens, Loki is tortured by the poison and his writhing causes earthquakes throughout the cosmos. 5. Idun Idun is the goddess of spring and youth. She tends to the orchards of Asgard where the fruit that gives the gods their youth and vigor grows. She is the guardian of these golden apples. In one story, due to the machinations of Loki, Idun is kidnapped by the giant Thassi. Loki tricks her by claiming that he has discovered fruits even more special than those of her orchards and inviting her to see them. When the gods realize that they are aging and becoming weak, they in turn strong-arm Loki into finding Idun and returning her to Asgard. Idun is sometimes referred to in the sources as a nature spirit who belongs to the elven race. This reflects the fact that in Norse mythology, the lines between gods, giants, and other supernatural beings are blurred. What is clear is that they are all more than human. 6. Hel Hel is the daughter of Loki and the giantess Angraboda. She was born with a body half flesh and half black, which has been interpreted as meaning that she is half living and half dead. The gods feared this monstrous child and were disgusted to look upon her. To get rid of Hel, Odin sent her to Niflheim to rule over the underworld that exists there. While Niflheim is not one of the coveted afterlifes, such as Valhalla, it is only one of many in Norse cosmology. It is not specifically for the wicked, but Hel's dominion there is absolute. No one can pass the gates of Helheim without her permission. She protects the gates with the help of her guard dog, Garm. Even when Odin's divine Aesir son, Baldr, dies and crosses into Helheim, Odin cannot retrieve him. Only Hel can release his soul. Hel agrees to return Baldr to the Aesir, but only if things in the cosmos weep for him to prove that he is universally loved. Loki, in disguise, refused to grieve. Baldr must stay in Helheim until Ragnarok. When the apocalypse arrives, Hel will sail against the Aesir in Asgard with an army of the dead. They will sail in ships made from the toe and fingernails of the dead. When she abandons her post in Helheim, Baldr will also be able to leave. 7. Gefion Gefion is another fertility goddess, specifically associated with agricultural practices and the plow. According to myth, she disguised herself as a poor beggar woman and asked the king of Sweden to give her some land. He said that she could have all the land that she could plow in one day and one night. To his surprise, Gefin plowed so deeply through the western part of Sweden that it was cut off from the mainland. This is how Zealand was created. 8. Skadi Skadi is a giantess who was considered the goddess of winter and skiing. She is the daughter of Thazi, who kidnapped Idun. He was killed during the retrieval of the goddess, so Skadi went to Asgard seeking revenge. The Aesir offered to pay for the death of Thadzi, this price including letting Skadi choose a husband from among the Aesir, but she had to choose by looking only at their feet. Skadi wanted to marry Baldr, and so chose the god with the most beautiful feet. But these belonged to Njord, a god of the sea, whose appearance had been diminished by the wind and salt. The two married, but soon separated as Skadi could not stand his seaside home, and Njord could not abide her cold, mountainous home. Instead, Skadi became a mistress of Odin. It was Skadi who placed the venomous serpent over the head of Loki when he was imprisoned. 9. Angraboda Angraboda is the giantess wife of Loki, and with him gave birth to three children, the mighty wolf Fenrir, the giant serpent Jormungandr, and the half-dead giantess Hel. The gods so feared the offspring of what they considered a monstrous union that they placed each of them somewhere in the cosmos where they could do the least harm. However, at the same time, the gods created powerful enemies that will come seeking revenge at Ragnarok. Angerboda's name means bringer of grief, and she is sometimes described as a witch that lives in a forest called Ironwood on the outskirts of Midgard. She is a fearsome warrior and can shapeshift into a wolf. She runs with her wolf pack in the forest and menaces the world of mortal men. 10. Fula, Gna, and Hlin 
For number 10, we have a set of three goddesses who are considered the handmaidens of Frigga. Fula is a chaste virgin and attends Frigga's ashen box and footwear. She is Frigga's favorite and she is the only one with whom Frigga shares her secrets. Gna is Frigga's most trusted messenger and runs errands for the Divine Queen across the Nine Worlds. She rides a horse called Hafarpnir and can run through the air and over water. Hlin protects people on Frigga's behalf and is often asked to protect Odin, who is sometimes called Hlin's second sorrow. If you want to learn more about any of them, you can find full articles on our website, vkngjewelry.com.